Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of the LFGM podcast. Let's fucking go, Mets. <sighs> Help. SOS. We're in trouble, man. The Mets are in trouble. Um, just for reference, today is Thursday, August 5th. It is 424, and the Mets have just dropped three out of four to the Miami Marlins. Uh, and it's starting to feel like this might be uh, the low point of the season. Matt, how you doing, buddy? We're not doing well. We're not doing well at all. I mean, between last week's recording and now, a, a decent amount has happened, and it just doesn't seem to matter, and most of it's not good. Um, this is almost like more of a state of emergency than a podcast episode. I feel the same way. It's, it's it's like, okay, we are here. We can't stay here. How are we going to get out of here? Well, I guess let's start with the positives. First off, um, at the trade deadline, the New York Mets and Sandy Alderson and Zach Scott acquired the talents of one Javier Baez, second baseman and shortstop from the Chicago Cubs. Uh, they also got um, uh, uh, I, is Trevor Williams. Would you say he's a starting pitcher, a leaf pitcher? He's kind of like in, in the mix there. He's and in between there, they got a pitcher um, from the Cubs as well, who they're stashing down in Syracuse uh, for Pete Crow Armstrong. So we give up a big talent there. We get a big talent in return. What were your initial thoughts on the trade? Um, and I guess the rest of the trade deadlines for some of the stuff that didn't uh, happen for us too. Yeah, overall, I was a little disappointed just because I was I would have been more excited with someone like, you know, I went I know he went early, but Adam Frazier. Um, yeah. even a starting pitcher, even just a relief pitcher like that. I told you the order of uh, players on the Cubs that I wanted was like Kimbrell, Bryant, Baez. So it's like yeah. Javier Baez is a good player. We know that. But I just don't know like how much – like, yeah, he, he'll help the team, but I just don't know how much he'll, he'll like really transform this this offense as we have been seeing recently because he's very hot and cold too. And yes, he yes. And, and misses a ton too, as we've been seeing. And he hits a long ball too. But I would have went a different route to try to get a little bit of a spark plug. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, listen, if we were trading for any of the Cubs, I think Baez would have been my last choice too. Um, people want to, you know, bitch and complain and say we should have traded for Chris Bryant. Well, the Giants gave up two top end prospects. We only gave up one. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it, it seems as if the Mets were not comfortable with giving up two top end prospects for Chris Bryant. And not that they went the cheap route, but they took an alternate option. Um, and, and they went with Javi Baez instead. I was really disappointed that, you know, we get the Jacob deGrom news before the trade deadline. They said it came in around 1, 2 o'clock, and they didn't add another starting pitcher as insurance. Um, they didn't add anybody into the bullpen like we saw, you know, the Phillies have done. Um, and it's paying dividends in Philadelphia already uh, by adding Ian Kennedy, uh, which is a guy who I really wanted. I know you really wanted him, too. Uh, so I was a little disappointed that Baez was the only option. But, um, you know, just listen to, like, sports radio, like, people complaining and, like, saying that Baez is, is not – he's not a good player. Why are we – giving like, they people just seem uneducated about who he is as a player and, and – uh, He's a guy that can play second. He can play short. He's played a little third base. He's got great hands, as we saw with that slide. Um, he's a, a, a gold glove caliber infielder. Um, he was a MVP candidate a few years ago. Uh, so there's, I mean, there's huge talent that's there. It's just uh, it hasn't, as as we saw today, you know, it doesn't always, you know, come to fruition um, in each and every game. So it, it can be a little frustrating uh, with Baez at times. But, I, I mean, to get a guy like him and, um, you know, going into an off season where he's going to be a free agent, where he gets to kind of scope things out and, and see is New York a place where he wants to be? Does he want to play with Francisco Lindor? I mean, he's getting a trial run basically at playing with Lindor in New York. So, um, you know, if you told me that uh, you would trade – for Chris Bryant and he would be here and gone, or you could trade for Javi Baez and, and he'd be here and potentially stay. I think I would, you know, if you, if you put that, you know, in my head, I think I'd rather have someone who's going to, you're going to trade and, and stay. 
but overall I would say a little disappointed as well on my end too. Yeah, I mean, look, Javi Baez is a really, really good player. It's not like I wouldn't have wanted him, but, like, imagine if we somehow, like, threw in, you know, a mid-level prospect and then got Kimbrell along with Baez in return as well. So it's like – because that's – my whole thing is we needed more than one guy. I don't consider Trevor Williams to to factor into this at all, other than like replacing Jared Eikhoff in terms of like getting a spot start, which probably will happen because that's what this team has been doing. Um, so yeah, I, I thought we needed more. I, I you know even if we just got Chris Bryant, I would have been like, okay, um, still think we needed more in terms of an arm, whether it's relief or starting. You know, you see our starters, and it's like a lot of them decent enough, but going five innings, six tops, it's yeah, they're not helping the bullpen at all. Even though they're like, they're 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 keeping the games close, which is nice, but they're not like, there's not one bulldog out there that's like, hey, let me give me the yeah. ball to go eight and, and we'll we'll two nothing this, today. This is a bullpen that we've seen pretty much get abused all year, uh, with with you know pitch counts and innings pitched and, and, you know, not necessarily with run scored per se. Uh, they've been, you know, really good in that department, but, you know, these, the innings are going to take a toll on some of these guys sooner or later. I mean, you, we kind of saw it happening with Miguel Castro. I, we, we've, I, this is a starting pitcher, but we've seen it kind of happen with Taiwan walking a little bit yeah. here. And then, you know, Familia today and, and yesterday he gives up the home run. Um, you know, he's had a really good year, and it's hard to to get mad at someone who's had a really good year, but is constantly being put in positions, you know, uh, where there's no insurance or tie games or or. Uh, yeah, I mean, the innings are going to catch up to some of these guys. So, um, it's I think the Mets are in a really tough spot right now, uh, especially with the schedule. You know, looking ahead here, the next month, month and a half. So we're in trouble. It's a huge swing in the miss by the front office to not get a reliever and like, Hey, this is going to be our, our strong suit. Our starters only have to go five. You know what I mean? Cause like yeah. it, you could be in the market for a starter and like it, the prices could have been just crazy for some guys that aren't just aren't that good. Right. So that's fine, but you can get another guy like an Ian Kennedy or someone um, and be like, Oh no, we're going to end this game after the fifth. This is right. so, so, I mean, if you have a team where, you know, you know, runs are at a premium at this point and starters are going five, maybe six innings. I, I, I told you my number one want was bullpen uh, over over an infielder. Um, I was just really disappointed that that it didn't even seem like it crossed their minds. Um, it, it sounded like, you know, uh they were really looking at like another mid-level starting pitcher. Maybe then they could move Rich Hill to the bullpen. Um, I don't know. I thought it was kind of a, a, I thought it was a big, a big mishap by the front office. One of the the few that they've had this year. Um, and you're, you're now you are banking on the return of Jacob deGrom in two, three weeks. And I guess yeah. we can, we can pause and stop there because the news on him ain't great, great either. No, no, it's not. And like the, I, it seems like the best case scenario, best, best is like he comes back in September for a few starts and we somehow were, were in the playoffs and then he can go from yeah. there along with some of these other guys. Sure. That's all good. Hopefully that happens. You know, nobody knows. It's a very weird situation. It's just crazy to me. Like, here's the deal. Like you get Javi Baez, you get an infielder, right? You get a bat. We're still relying on fucking Albert Al- Almora and Brandon Drury to come up with a big hit at the fucking end of a game to, to beat the Marlins. It's, it's insane. It's like, how did you not see that happening at all? Well, I'm going to rattle off some stats for you. I did a little bit of research, a little homework here first. So I'm just going to be re- – I'm reading them off a piece of paper here. In the last 10 games, the Mets are 3-7. and seven. So they're, they've dropped four games right there. Um, since the All Star break, they're nine and twelve. So that's nine to twelve. That's three games right there. Since the All Star break, um, today they left fifteen runners on base. 
Uh, yesterday, they left <laughs> one on base. So in the last two days, they've left 23 runners on base. Um, and a little, little, I want you to just random guess here. When was the last time you think the Mets scored more than five runs in a game? Jeez. Was it, was it right after the trade deadline? Was it the 31st of July? July 21st. 10 days oh, before the trade sure. deadline. The last time the Mets scored more than five runs was July 21st when they oh beat the my. Cincinnati Reds seven to nothing. That was the series in Cincinnati. How, like, how was this offense this bad? I just like, my big question is like, and it's rhetorical. I don't have an answer for it. I, and I just, where is this team that we saw that was like playing in Yankee Stadium with so much confidence and like beating the piss out of the Yankees and having so much fun? Where like where is the joy? Um, they're going out there. They're they're very much pressing at this point. Um, you know they they get their walks and that's never been a problem all year. I think they had like seven or eight walks today, but they you got to score more than two, three runs. Um, it, it's been, it's been really hard to watch, really hard to watch. That's why I think like, I, I don't even see them as like pressing cause I see them walking and like not necessarily swinging out of the zone any more than they normally do. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, I think they're just a bunch, there's still a bunch of young guys that are wildly inconsistent, but at some point, especially depending on how the season ends, you got to maybe like look in a different direction um, with some of these hitters and like, Hey, you can't have so many hot and cold guys. You you got to have some guys that just uh, like, thank God for VR. He's just so consistent. He's so consistent. And he, and he, you know, it's, he's not going to do a ton that like wows you really, but man, he puts together good at bats. Brandon Nimmo puts together good at bats. The rest of them, I don't know, man. They disappear for a long, long time. I, I'm still hopeful that McNeil comes back to the McNeil of old. He's had a few hits the other way, like that are reminiscent of two or three years ago. But like, if he doesn't, he's expendable too at this point because it's like, dude, I don't need you to try to yank everything to get 22 home runs in a yep. juice era. Like, I'm good. I don't need that. So like. And the thing is, he's not doing that anyway. <laughs> it's If that's what he's doing, it's not working. I will say, I think the last 10 or so games, he's he's been one of their best players, even yeah, with a bum leg. Even with a bum leg. Um, I mean, Dom Smith has been pretty good, but he's only batting, what, 250? Um, Alonzo's like 260 right now. I mean, a lot of these guys, it, and, and we got we to gotta talk about him. I mean, Conforto is way under 200 right now. And he looks like a lost puppy. The puppy who lost his way is Michael Conforto. He was kicking that ball around in the outfield today. Oh my God. That's, I, I wonder what like what he gets at the end of the year. I don't care if he hits 500 the rest of the way. It's like, what do you give a guy like that? What does anyone give if a guy you, like that? So, and I, I had a conversation with a friend about this the other day. Would you extend the qualifying offer at this point? Yeah, you have no choice. You have no choice, right? Because you need compensation if he signs somewhere else. No choice. Yeah, but who's, who's going to offer him that one year twenty? It's like twenty one million or eighteen million, I think it is. Strowman got like eighteen point nine, right? Yeah, it's usually right around there. Um, yeah. That's honestly, he he's going to have no choice but to. Uh, I know. It, it's like, you know, he was supposed to be one of the best. Um, position players in this free agent market, and it's not a great free agent market either. So he was no, going to really not. get paid. It's short happen, it's shortstop, I, which we already have two now. Again, um, and even if he like hits five fifty the rest of the way, it's not going to happen. Like no, if he hits five fifty the rest of the way, I don't think his average would his average would be around like two thirty, two forty. It's crazy. That's nuts. Um, I guess in positive news, we should be seeing Francisco Lindor getting ramped up here soon. Uh, They said early August, a few weeks back. It is early August. Um, You know, him and Baez, as as a, and people are assuming that Javi's going to play second base and McNeil will shift over to third. I don't, I don't know if that's 
necessarily the case. I think Javi can play third base as well. So, um, you know, they have some flexibility there to, to you know, McNeil had a really good year at second base. I don't know if you want to mess with that. Um, Javi's come in here too, and he's kind of, he's trying to, you can tell he's trying to light a fire under these guys. He's yelling at, you know, the Marlins pitcher, and he's yelling at the, their dugout the other day. Um, these guys seem a little lifeless right now. But, yeah, I, th- I think, you know, when Frankie comes back and you get Javi, him and, you know, turning two up the middle right there, that'll be fun, you know, when they get a chance to play together there. He's um, so good defensively. He's the, so the two good. Of them are gonna be, if they're up the middle, man, that's that's a fun duo to watch. And you slide McNeil over to third base. Um, you could have, you know, J.D. could play against lefties. He could play against righties. Um, don't forget Jeff McNeil can play the outfield a little bit too. He wasn't great out there, um, but it's it's something, you know, you can look into. Um, I don't know, man. I'm just, they got to score runs and they're not, (laughs) and I don't know, you know, you can't, what are you going to blame Hugh Quattlebaum? We're going to go through two hitting coaches. Like what, what's the next move? I know. I mean, the, the thing is though, they're not doing anything right. Right. Like they're, they're not doing anything good at all. Like even, I have a stat for you. I know you're usually the stat guy, but this is insane. Uh, this was tweeted out by Decomo, so I'm not sure if you saw it. The last time a Mets starting pitcher recorded a win was July 23rd. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. And Mets starters in general have four wins total in their last 47 games. Yeah. I'm, so I'm that means much- they're not go- They're not doing anything either. They're just no. going four and two thirds, five with four run. Like. Yeah, that ain't enough. Well, you know, Stroman, you know, if you you look at the numbers, he's actually had a really good year. Um, He was a little rocky of late. He's seven and 10, which is crazy, but he's got a two eight ERA. Um, You know, he's under three. It's hard to complain about that. He has been a little rocky lately. He's kind of been like a little roller coaster, but I do think he's um, on the mend there. Taiwan Walker is a huge question mark for me. I think it's time to start pushing the panic button there because he did not look good against the Marlins again early. Um, he settled, but still, I mean, it, it, this is a guy who's coming off of two years. Um, you know, last year, obviously, under 100 innings in the 60-game season. The year before, he had Tommy John surgery, so he, you know, obviously under 100 innings, and it seems like the innings are catching up to him. Uh, Tyler McGill is young, and you just, I mean, how many innings can you get out of that arm, Right. Um, and then you got I Rich. Like him, I like him too. I like him a lot. Yeah. Yeah. How far, how far are you going to push him? Rich Hill's a guy that is going to give you five innings, maybe six if you're lucky. And same with Carrasco at this point. They're, they're just, you know, warming him up. He went four innings the other day. He went four and two, I think it was like four and two thirds last night, maybe five innings. Let's talk about that though. He, he looked good. He looked pretty good. Fastball's going 96. But dude, um, it's so disappointing to end it like that. Like, I know. I know. He just lost everything. I'm like, yeah. geez, man. I was talking to you about like this guy can go six. He's crazy. He's, he's at like 45 points through four innings. I'm like, this, he looks really good. And then but just when, I, when he opened fifth. up that fifth and had guys on, I was like, you got to be kidding me. He yep. he has no chance of getting out of this. They had to pull him. I was like, he looked amazing before that. And so, you know, I, I do think it's um, – you really are kind of just wait and see and crossing your fingers with the Grom. I mean, if he's not here – we said it last week. If he's not here, they got no shot at winning, doing anything in the playoffs. Um, I think he would really, you know, kind of lift up the spirits. And, and he's – dude, he's your stopper, right? We always said this. You know every fifth day that you have a Scion candidate going out there who should get you a W or put you in line to get a W. Um, and rush it. Can't rush it. And I think that's what he tried to do last time, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, upcoming schedule here. Um, they go to Philadelphia for three games there. So um, that's for the division lead at this point, which is crazy. Uh, right now, the Mets are 56 and 52. They're four games over 500. Phillies 55 and 53. They're two games over 500, which means the Phillies are one game back in the division. Um, and they play tonight, so there's a chance that they can get it down to a half game or it'll be up to a game and a half, uh, depending on what happens in their game tonight. Um, 
but yeah, those three games are going to be for the division lead, which is absolutely insane to think about. And don't sleep on Atlanta. Uh, they got Jorge Soler and Adam Duvall's having a great season. Yeah. Um, and, and Atlanta's 54 and 54. They're only two games back right now. And this is the problem with, you know, the Mets. They got to 10 games over 500. They dropped back down to like eight. And they would fluctuate between six and eight. And they just kind of played 500 baseball. And they didn't build on their lead at all. At all. And it's catching up to them right now. And it feels like it's about to bite them in the ass. Yeah, none of these guys are just, you know, we beat this into the ground to death. But they they don't <laughs> they don't hit with the runners in scoring positions. None of these guys have any kind of RBI stats. I think the Braves have like two – Two players in the top five in RBI. Yeah. Uh, and well, uh, Duvall is one of them. It, it, and uh, the Marlins had two as well. It was uh, Aguilar and Adam Duvall before he got traded. So, And I think um, uh, for the Braves, it might be um, uh, Ozzy, Ozzy Albies. Yeah. And now Adam Duvall. Um, I just – so they got three in Philly. They got a day off after that. Uh, then they come home for three with Washington. And then the schedule's as hard as it can get. Uh, you got um, uh, seven with the Dodgers and six with the Giants after that. So your next four series are against two of the best teams in baseball after that. Um, yeah. If there was a time to get hot, uh, the time is now. Um, and if, if it doesn't happen now, uh, we're going to be looking at a team who's uh, in second place uh, going up against two of the best teams um, in the National League. I'm glad it's like that too. I'm glad it's because it is do or die now. It's like some of these guys just have no like, like yep. hey, time to get going. Um, yep. and, and you see, like we talk about these ha- guys having decent stats, but I, I, I'm starting to think that. I mean, I know that they're just hitting in like meaningless situations. Yeah, yeah. that's the John. It's, Carlos, like, it's the John Carlos Stanton effect, or or you know. If you want to go even further back, people used to say this about A Rod too. A Rod be hitting a grand slam when the team was up seven to one. Yeah, well, I wish we would score seven runs at this point. So a little yeah, different. Been doing that a long time. A yeah. Long time. How much can you say? How much can you really say? I know. <laughs> it, it's got, this is, but this has got to be, this has got to be the low point of the season, right? Yeah, this is yeah, this is rough. Um, and here's four from from uh, in Miami. Like, come on. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And so here's what I would say. You told me in the beginning of the year that um, it was August. Let's say August. We'll go August sixth for tomorrow, right? And the Mets had a one game lead in the division. They were four games over five hundred. And you've been missing Jacob Degrom for now. We'll call it a little over a month. Would you take that? It's different, right? When you put it in that perspective, it yeah. feels different, you know. It's, uh, honestly, I think you know the other teams. Though, yeah. No, I wouldn't. I because or like even if you told me our record, our record sucks. Um, no, I wouldn't. I, I would say no. We're better than that. Yeah. Even without him, we're we're better than that. That's what I would say. So it's I, I'm I'm just maybe I'm like really negative now, but that's just how I feel when you know 56 and 52. I don't know. Maybe if you told me we were what 58 and 50, I'd feel a little bit better. I guess I don't know what a couple games does, but it's tough, man. When you're three and seven, your last ten, it's like, and the way we lose. You know, that all matters, too. You know what I mean? Like, it matters more than just, like, throwing stats out there. The way we lose is tough. We shouldn't be giving up runs at this point by kicking the ball around in the outfield. And oh, That was you know, tough. Yeah. yeah, no, no. Um, and you know what? I would have I would have been almost fine at this point with losing, like, 7 to 5. I don't know. <laughs> like – as long as they hit, they score some runs, right? Like, give me something different. That's the only thing. It's like the same old thing over and over again. It's hard to watch. It really is. Yep. It's not a good product right now. And then you get Steve Cohen tweeting at dinner. Like, man, we got to get hot. Like, Steve, 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 come on, man. Yeah. Well, we, we could actually talk about uh, 
with his tweet and Kumar Rocker too. We didn't sign Rocker, so yeah, that yeah, I yeah. think that like yeah. pretty much. Uh, I mean, we were sucking before then too, but the last week, especially with that being last Sunday, it's like, damn man, this just doesn't end. So Kumar Rocker, they put up the billboard before he even signs, right? <laughs> Then you don't sign. Then Steve Cohen tweets about how um, signing draft picks will get you five times the the um, five times the investment or whatever. Like he's a human being. He's not a stock. Like talk to him. Talk about him like he's a human being. Then you got it. You get involved with Boris. Boris wants six mil. The Mets only offer five. They stay at five. Kumar Rocker doesn't sign. Rocker's got to go back to Vanderbilt, so he's going to do another year there. The Mets blame it on his elbow, but the Mets do – they get a compensation pick at least out of this, which is nice. Um, you know, if they weren't comfortable with it, why offer five would be my question. Yeah, yeah. No, spot on. Um, like, you know what I mean? What's the difference between five and six at this point if you save right. one side yeah. for that? Right, and – Basically, by not signing him and by picking him in the tenth spot, um, they had like one of the worst drafts of the year. Um, so uh, yeah, we didn't get anyone really. I mean, but look, we we've had some good drafts over the last couple of years. Oh um, yeah, think about. I mean, since they took Brandon Nimmo out of high school, Nimmo, Dom Smith, David Peterson, uh, Alonzo, and McNeil were early. Um, Trying to think Even about. with the, the farm system now, we have a top farm system considered, you know, across the board in the big league. Yeah. So that, that's not bad. Um, and, and, and I think this has happened you know, before. Three, so yeah. they've got three of the top 25 prospects or three in the top 25. I think they just bumped Ronnie Mauricio into the top 25. Um, I read this earlier today. I'm going to get the numbers wrong. So don't quote me on this. But um, Francisco Alvarez is eight in the top 25. Um, and this is for all of baseball minor leagues. Um, like if you look at the top hundred, yeah. but specifically in the top twenty-five, Alvarez is eight. I think Beatty is eighteen, and I think they just bumped Mauricio up to twenty-five, twenty-four, twenty-five, which is nice. I mean, you got three in the top twenty-five. That's you know that speaks volumes about where this the franchise is headed in the next you know few years here. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely comforting. Um, and. We get the picks next year, and we'll see. It is just a weird situation that just gets added on to us losing a ton of games lately, and it's like, all right, here we are, back to zero. Yep, yep. They, I mean, you got three with the Phillies, three three at home with the Nationals. Um, we always talk about, like, I, I don't think the Phillies are a very good team. No. I, I mean, it's time to go prove it. Uh, and then you got three with the Nationals, who – are getting their ass kicked to the Phillies this week. They just traded everybody off of that fucking team. You better go take biz- take care of business at home against the Nationals before you go Dodgers, Giants, Dodgers, Giants. Yeah. Yeah, I that, agree. That could be the death of us. That could be the death of us. Those two weeks right there is going to be just – that's going to oh, be tough. It, it's going to be huge. We're actually – we're lucky it's home. So take that at least. Yep. But – because we don't do well on the road anyway, especially West Coast, that wouldn't be ideal. Well, so. first two series, I think the first first two are right. First two are home, and then the next two are out west. So yeah. Well, hopefully they can get hot. Other than that, there's not like. What do you say? I don't know. It's, it's, you 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 pray to the baseball gods that Jacob Degrom's forearm heals up. Uh, you pray that we get. Uh, old Frankie back, not not uh, this year, Frankie, and uh, and Michael Conforto can start uh, roping some baseballs again. He has made some decent contact the last week, but he's just they're going right at people. I kind of feel bad for him. And then some other app. I mean, I would say ninety percent of the at bats, he looks just like a lost puppy, like he's lost. He's gone. I'd go under surgery if I had a tendon that Jacob needed. Take me under tomorrow. <laughs> you would I give swear. it to Yeah, I give it to him. Yeah. What do I need it for? Yeah, you're right. Unless, unless they're like, hey, you, you can't write, you can't hold a fourth. Well, we got to draw the line left, there take or something. Left I don't need my left <laughs> <one>. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> But they're like, yeah, you're going to be perfectly fine after this. You'll be able to do things. You're just not going to be able to throw 100 miles an hour. It's like, well, I don't do that anyway, so just take it. Yeah, just give it to someone who needs it. 
yeah, yeah. That's what I would do. That's I, that's what I think about. That's what I think about when I see him playing catch in the outfield. It's like, how can I help him? They got to score some runs tomorrow, man. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not hopeful. I'm not. I don't have high hopes of that. I literally, I, I, I had to shower after today's game. I felt so dirty just watching it. I mean, I'm just, I'm glad it's over with. It's, it's nice. It, it's tough to spend every, every night, 7 p.m., 7 to 10, 10 30, their games going Big on. Commitment. Oh, and just get your dick kicked in. It's tough to watch that every fucking night. Like, it's at least I could go do something and watch something else tonight, you know? Yeah. Tomorrow is Stroman Gibson. Saturday, 4 15 game is Tyler McGill and Randy Suarez. Um, and Sunday's a one o'clock game against the Phillies. Taiwan Walker against you know who, former Met, uh, Cy Young candidate. Uh, yeah, yeah. Zach Wheeler. So, time well, to nut and shut up, boys. That's it. That's it. That's literally it. I don't know if I'm going to watch this weekend. If they lose the first game, I might just be done. I might, I might, I might need a break. It's like going gonna, on the floor from a drug. I'm going to crumble. <laughs> I'm going to crumble physically. I'm going to break yeah, down at all. Don't text me if they lose the first game. Just leave me leave me alone. I wonder how Frank the Tank is doing. You you know what I always think of, like, lately watching this team? I think of that Pittsburgh Steelers fan that they, they lose in the playoffs, and he's, like, screaming in the living room. He's like – you're going to find me dead. I'm not doing the dishes. Nothing. <laughs> That's me. It's, it's like, hey, you're going to find me in the bathroom. I don't, really, I, don't have the, I don't even have the energy for that. I was just like, well, I literally, I was so grossed out after today's game. I just felt gross. I felt nasty. How do you leave that many guys on base? How many times did they leave the bases fucking loaded? Multiple times. Oh, my God. And the Marlins gifted them a run in this in the ninth inning. Two I know, they helped them out plenty. <laughs> <laughs> the Marlins are not good. Let's no, face it. They're they not helped good. Them out plenty. <laughs> like watching, it's literally like watching like a triple A AAA versus double A team at this point. That's what it feels like. I don't know, man. You got anything else? I'm done. I I, I really need a break from the Mets, but I'm gonna try to watch tomorrow and we'll see. I'm how done. I will watch, but I'm done. <laughs> and brain hurts. That's it. All right. It's another episode of the LFGM podcast. We are beat. We are Say hurt. it. Say it. Put it in the books. <laughs>